In this exercise, we're going to estimate an autoregressive model of order p with ordinary least squares. To this, we're going to write our own function in MATLAB for this. So let's dive in. Okay, so let's consider the ARP model with a constant term and possibly also with a linear um, time trend here. Okay, we have p lagged variables, we have p coefficients and we have a white noise process u that is of course mean zero and has a variance a sigma squared u. Now let's put all those regressors as you already know from your econometrics class into a matrix okay and let, I'm calling this matrix uppercase y. All right and then we can define the OLS estimator of the constant, the coefficient for the linear trend and my p um, autoregressive coefficients. Under the assumption of stationarity and other standard regularity conditions, one can show that the estimate is normally distributed and we get this expression for the variance of this normal distribution, which we need to compute standard errors of our estimator. Now, the residual variance can be estimated using the OLS residuals you had uh, simply by taking an average here. Okay, so let us write a function. Let's call this function ARPOLS that has inputs y, this is the data vector, the number of flags I want to consider, and a constant c. If that is one, then I want to estimate a model with a constant. If it is two, then I want to estimate a model with a constant and a linear time trend. And also there's a significance level, which we use to compute uh, t-statistics, confidence intervals, uh, and such things. Because the output of this function um, is basically a structure, so an object that contains other objects. And I want that to be to include the OLS estimate of theta, its standard errors, the t-statistics, and p-values, um, given the significance value alpha, maybe also some confidence intervals, uh, and also the OLS estimate of the standard error of the white noise process. Okay, so let's dive in into MATLAB. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so let's first define the name of the function. This is a, the structure that I want to output, ARP, OLS, Y, P, const, and alf. Okay, and let's include the end function here. This is the function end. So first of all, let me get the number of observations. Okay, this is the sample size. All right, then I need to create this um, uppercase Y matrix. And here you can actually use, if you have the econometrics toolbox installed, um, a, um, this function lag matrix that takes as input a vector Y and gives you some lags. Okay, so I want lag one up to 10. Okay, so click, have a look at that if my function y is 1 to 10 and p is equals to 3, then this command lag matrix will give me a matrix. Okay, this is lagged by 1, lagged by 2, lagged by 3 periods. Okay, this is exactly what I want. But I do have those NINs. So actually the effective sample size I'm using is T, capital T minus the number of legs. Okay, so let me define this as well already. So T effective, T minus P. Okay, so this is the effective sample size used in estimation. All right, now I need to add uh, something to this uh, uppercase Y matrix. If the constant is one, okay, so then I need to add something. And you do that in MATLAB, you create a new matrix by using those square brackets. Okay, so I want to, if I am adding a constant, I need to add a column of ones. Okay, so there's the command ones for that. And it's supposed to have T rows and it's one column and it includes the rest. Okay, there might also be the possibility that 
this variable has the value 2 where I need to add a linear time trend so a vector that goes from 1 up to t okay so we'll 1 to t actually I need to take the transpose of that so it's a column vector here okay and this was my function and so this is my if and now I need to get rid of those first observations okay so my actual y is p plus 1 up to and and I want to keep all the columns okay okay so this get rid of initial p observations and I do also need to do this for my endogenous variable here so for the vector of observations so I also need to do p plus 1 up to end of that vector okay so this is also get rid of those initial p observations now then I'm computing the OLS estimate here so let's use yy inverse here to compute the inverse of y prime y okay so this is basically computing this sum over here okay now theta hat my OLS estimate is defined as yy inverse times y prime times y okay so this is the OLS estimator of coefficients now let's also do the predicted values that would be y times theta hat and if I have the predicted values I can actually compute then the residuals okay this is y minus y hat okay so this these are the predicted values um, these are the OLS residuals okay Now let's compute the variance of the error term. Okay, so I want to do the variance of the error term. And let's call this var u hat. Well, for this, I will need uh, u prime times u. Okay, so let's do u u, which is u hat prime times u hat. And the variance then is this uu divided by tf minus p minus constant. Okay, if I have, if I add um, just the constant, I need to subtract one um, more. Um, one more. If I have a constant and a linear trend, I need to subtract the two here. That's why constant is supposed to be two, and here it's supposed to be one. Okay, so this is the variance of the error term. And once I have that, I can compute then the sigma u hat, which is then the square root of this variance. Okay, now I want to compute the standard error of, of my OLS estimate. For this, I also need this inverse right here and an estimate for sigma square u which I would just compute it okay so we have everything that we that we need all right so the variance of my theta hat is equals the variance of my u hat times the y prime y matrix the inverse right over here okay okay so this is then the covariance matrix of the coefficients Okay, and then I can do theta hat, uh, which is then the square root. But here I really now want to focus on the diagonal of the variance. Okay, so I really don't care about those covariances. All right. Okay, so these are the standard arrows of coefficients. 
OK. Now, let's compute the t-statistic. OK, so the t-statistic is basically theta hat, um, which is now a vector, and I want to divide each of that by its corresponding standard error. So if I want to divide element-wise, I need to do dot divide by the standard error here. Okay, so this is the t-statistic and the critical value uh, is given in from the t-distribution. Okay, so the, the t you put in your basically your alpha and then the degrees of freedom. Okay, and if you remember from your class in econometrics, that would be um, alpha half because uh, we have the left and the right uh, side of the distribution and the degrees of freedom is basically the effective number of observations minus the number of coefficients minus the additional coefficients you needed to estimate if you had any constants or linear term here. Okay, let us quickly test this. So let us simply, I don't know, do a hundred uh, normally distributed errors here. Um, I just want to make sure that the function right now works up until here. Okay, so evaluate section. I Oh yeah, of course there is, this should be inverse and there's a, this too, so I can run this. Uh, okay, so no errors, it runs through. And if you have a look at the critical value here, this will be the minus 1.9. Eight. So very close to the famous 1.96 from the normal distribution. Okay, now let us compute the uh, p-value. So p-values, uh, here we have to look at the PDF of the t-distribution. The command for this is uh, t-pdf. Um, we have to input the t-statistic and again the degrees of freedom, which is this expression again. Okay, so let's have a look what is, okay, so these are the p-values for the coefficients. Now, of course, the data is totally random, um, not from an ARMP model, this is just for testing purposes. And let me also compute confidence uh, intervals. Okay, so this is the t-statistic, this is the critical value and this is the p-value. Okay, now let's also do confidence intervals. Let's call this theta ci and there are always two, a lower and an upper one. Okay, so uh, what do we do? We take the OLS estimate and we do plus minus the critical value times the um, standard error of the OLS estimate, okay? Because the critical value here is a negative one, the lower, so I need to do a plus t crit times um, zig theta hat, and I do want to do this element wise here, okay? So this is basically theta ci low, let's call it like that, and theta ci high, or upper bound, that is the same with a minus. Okay, and then my confidence interval is the matrix here, or a vector of the low and the upper bound. Okay, and that's it. Now we need to put everything into the output structure, okay? So store into output structure. A structure in MATLAB is basically like a box and you can put other boxes into the box and those boxes can again contain other boxes, okay? So this is um, the idea of structures, to have everything knight into one object here. So let me um, include the effective sample size. Okay, so there was uh, TF um, and you always use the dot to access those uh, variables again or to save them in the, into there. 
So I want theta hat, theta hat. I want uh, this is the Q hat. Let's call this the Q hat, and that was the Q hat. I want to save OLS uh, the theta hat, the theta hat. Um, what else do we have? The T statistic, so OLS T stat, OLS um, P values. And the confidence interval, theta ci, and maybe also the residuals. Okay, so let's call this resid you had. Okay, so you don't have, of course, you don't have to use the same variable names. Uh, if you put them into a structure, you can call this whatever you want. Okay, and then this is the end of my function. All right. So let's see with the random data that we entered if there is no obvious error. Okay. All right. Now let's give it a test drive. Okay. So we need to save this. And you should uh, keep the name that you used in the function as the name of the file. Okay. We've saved this. Now let us let us do the second part of the exercise. Let's load some simulated data for an ARP process here, which is given in this mat file, and estimate this model with our function. Okay. So let me go into my data folder uh, AR four mat. You can simply hit or let's clear everything. So let's clear all vars. Okay, you can simply hit load. Then let's go back into the folder of my function. Okay, I have my AR4 data is in here. It's a vector that has 159 observations. Let's call this AR4, this function. Um, the data is called AR4 data. I want to estimate this using four legs and I want to include a constant and I want to use 5% significance value. Oh, let me quickly check if we did the alpha half. Yes, we did. Okay. All right. Let's see if that works. Okay. And let's have a look into this. Okay, so you can see here now this is a structure and has different fields and you can access all those fields using simply the dot. Okay, so let's maybe have a look at the coefficients. Okay, so AR4 theta hat. Okay, so this is the constant and this is the first autoregressive coefficient, the second, the third and the fourth. All right. And um, I can actually, let's compare this because this is simulated data that I used. Here's some uh, code. So these were the true values. Okay. And let's put this in a table. Oh yeah, AR4. That was called AR4. Okay. And let's compare. Okay. So these were the values that I used. Okay. And this is, these are the OLS estimates. So pretty close. Okay. How close? Well, we can actually have a look at the standard error of, um, what was it uh, there? Okay. How precise did we estimate? Okay. And at the end, what I usually do is whenever I write a function that works, I always go back and provide some information on this function. Okay. So I'm using the comments here to tell people what this function does. What are the assumptions on the, um, that I need on my inputs. Okay. So this is, needs to be a vector. This constant is one or two and the, um, alf it's called actually it's the significance value. And then, the output argument is the structure. And here I tell exactly what this 
structure contains. Okay, so whenever people, so when somebody uses this function, uh, he can actually have a look at that. And also, it's always nice to include some contact details. So you, if you want to ask questions here. All right, that's it.